Hi, my name's Ron Keener and I would like to introduce you to the all new Silver Fox Fox Whistle. Now I'm not laying claim to be the inventor of these whistles as I know they have been around for many many years. What I have done is taken the old GM tin type Fox Whistle and added a totally new sound to it uh, which works extremely well. Can you get him closer, Ron, or...? Oh, you can get him closer, but that wasn't too bad. You should have seen him all right, didn't you? Well, I don't know. I'm just wondering why you shoot it and why you just didn't put your hand down and catch him. <laughs> Second one for the day, another little vixen. They're all moulting at the moment, we're in November. Uh, she's had pups. And, uh, yeah, they're all starting to moult. Little red dog. Now my great uncle, Gilbert Knipe, who is 96 years of age, has been using one of these type whistles since he was a very small lad to whistle up foxes. He said he can remember when he was a very young child, he heard uh, gunshots coming from a paddock near where he lived and um, he didn't know what it was so he approached his father and said uh, you know what's all commotion about and his father informed him that his uh, elder cousin was next door whistling up and shooting foxes now in the early 1900s times were very tough and to make a fox whistle the average farmer or young child would either raid mum's kitchen or wander down to the local rubbish dump and uh, pick up an old tobacco tin a jam tin and uh, wander back up to the shed with it he'd take a pair of tin snips cut a square out of the jam tin, fold it and punch a nail through it to form up a very crude little whistle. Uh, looks something like that. And when you'd finished making one of those little whistles they would produce a tune which was a very crisp little whistle which sounded something like this. Which was meant to imitate the noise uh, produced by a trapped or injured rabbit. Now because these little whistles were very easy to make they were never given a lot of respect. They were chucked in the glove box of the uh, farm ute or placed in your hip pocket and sat on numerous times. After reshaping, they'd eventually crack. Uh, so in the mid 70s, my dad and I decided to uh, make a couple out of copper and we added a chain to them and a safety pin so that we could uh, attach them to our shirt. And uh, the chain we used for was from a claw's foot bathtub uh, which uh, anchored the plug. So it's got a bit of history. Um, I've had this for nearly 40 years, so uh, and it produces a tune very similar to the original type whistle.
Now a couple of years prior to making these copper whistles, my uncle and I were going out spotlighting one night and just prior to leaving we realised that we couldn't find a fox whistle anywhere so I uh, quickly uh, ducked into the shed, got a pair of tin snips, a bit of tin plate, uh, quickly cut out the shape of a whistle, uh, punched a hole through it and uh, put it to my lips and to my surprise it sounded absolutely nothing like our normal whistles. It was very raspy, um, just not a crisp whistle at all and I thought oh, I haven't got time to make another one so I'll take this one and give it a try. So on that particular night we actually whistled up 17 foxes uh, and back in the 70s it was a pretty profitable little night. I think they averaged about $40 a piece so uh, yeah it worked very well. Now approximately 18 months ago I was at the local watering hole one night uh, minding my own business when a good friend of mine introduced me to one of his mates. It turned out that him and I had a lot in common. We uh, got rid of a few beers that night and discussed uh, clay target shooting, rifle shooting, uh, hunting in general, fishing and we finally got down to uh, whistling foxes and he said he absolutely loved whistling foxes. I said well so do I so we must get together and uh, go and bust a few sometime. A week or so later he arrived at my house, um, unloaded his gear out of the back of the car which included his backpack, uh, the 223 and a Tenafell whistle. Uh, he immediately turned around and said to me what sort of whistle do I use and I said oh I don't buy anything I make my own and he said oh, I'd be interested to see how they work. So uh, because he had his rifle I went down and got my old double barrel shotgun and uh, we headed off. And because we were whistling on uh, one of the properties that he normally whistles on, um, he took control of the whistling and um, out of about five or six stands he whistled up about three foxes and had a pretty good run. And we got out into some fairly open country and he whistled away and didn't have much luck. And I said, do you mind if I give my whistle a go? And he said, no, go ahead by all means. Anyway, uh, I got my whistle and belted the tune out. It was a, a lot louder than the Tenafield and it was echoing up through the valley and next thing this fox come bounding down the hill flat out and come up and sat on a rock and he up with a uh, 223 and bowled it. And he immediately turned around and he said, geez, I like that whistle. He said, you should make and sell them. A period of probably two or three months passed before I gave that uh, thought any more consideration. Uh, sitting here having a beer one afternoon and my mind wandered back to the whistle I made back in the 70s which had that uh, raspiness in it and I thought I wonder could I combine that with the whistle that we're using now and get the two tones into one whistle. Over a period of about six months I came up with a whistle I now call the Silver Fox Whistle. Looks very similar to the old type whistle and it has two notes in it and uh, I'll just give it a blow and give you uh, a listen to it. Now after taking this whistle into the bush many many times I realised I was on a winner. I finally had something that foxes just couldn't resist. What are you doing? Meow. Meow.
when your whistle first arrives, you'll notice it's in a little protective case. This helps to keep the dust out of the whistle, and if you replace the whistle into the case after each time you use it, you're less likely to lose it. Now, um, after that, remove the whistle from the case, and the first thing you must do is uh, grab yourself a little ruler and uh, measure the distance between the bottom and top lip. Place the ruler just behind the lanyard, like so, and measure from the bottom lip to the top lip, and it should come out to be about 16 or 17 mil. Now, as these whistles are all individually handmade and hand tuned, each individual whistle can vary slightly. So, if you write down the distance between the bottom and the top lip on your particular whistle, uh, how many millimetres, write that down and put it somewhere so you know if you ever happen to squash the whistle, you can put the whistle straight back to where it should be and it'll come out with exactly the same note that I manufactured it with. Now, before you learn to blow the whistle, there's one thing you need to know about holding it. Uh, take the whistle. You notice the lanyard hanging at the bottom, place your thumb just behind the lanyard and your two fingers inside the knot of the lanyard. What that does, that produces a little tunnel there which actually helps direct the noise away from your ears and also directs the noise out into the paddock where you're trying to whistle. Like so. Now if you've blown an old style GM tin fox whistle or blown a Tenafel fox whistle, you'll have absolutely no trouble blowing these. But if you've only ever blown a round button whistle, you may have some problems. So uh, here's how to uh, go about it. Now there is one thing that is an imperative with all these types of whistles, that the tip of your tongue or the flat of your tongue must be in contact with the back of the whistle, that's the, uh, the V where it's folded, or just slightly underneath at all times. If your tongue is not in contact with this area, you won't be able to blow the whistle. So to actually blow it, uh, poke your tongue out, and make contact with the back of the whistle, so it'll look like such. Once you do that, then you can slowly move the whistle back into your mouth, blowing just ever so slightly, and uh, till you uh, can produce a note. So you'll do as follows. Now make sure you don't tip the whistle back that way, or don't tip it forward. The whistle must remain flat in your mouth at all times, so it'll look like so. Now once you get that you can get a nice even whistle out of it, it'll sound a bit like this. You'll note that my lips are about halfway up the whistle and totally covering the bottom and the top holes. Now I've had the occasional person that has trouble blowing these whistles. And when I look at them trying to blow, they look like they're trying to blow a rage, but they go <sighs> Try and tense your lips a little bit and your cheeks a little bit as if you're going to whistle. So you'll go <sighs> and then place the, place the whistle in, tip your tongue on the back of it and try. Go <sighs> so just stiffen your lips and your tongue a little bit, just exactly the same as if you're going to whistle. But <sighs> no raspberries. <sighs> Now once you can get the slightest noise out of the whistle, it's just a matter of practice. So just keep doing what you've been doing. Tip of your tongue on the back of the whistle, like so, and just slowly in and out till you get a nice firm note. So it's just... Once you've achieved that note, then the whistle can be blown in puffs, like... A little bit like blowing a candle out, so you can actually raise and lower the note emitted from the whistle. So it'll be... And then by quivering it a little bit, you can get a little bit more stress into it. So you Now I've had a couple of people say to me that they're too loud. They're people that are used to using a button whistle or a Tenafel whistle. The reason I made them loud is a lot of people say you can't whistle foxes on windy days. The note emitted from these whistles will travel up to two kilometres. I've been out near farmhouses on, uh, late, up, late in the afternoon when dogs are tied up and as soon as you start to whistle and you're at least two kilometres away from the house, the dogs will start barking as soon as you start whistling. So that's the great advantage of them. Uh, but if you want to work around blackberries or bracken fern or you know, little tight areas where you only want to whistle every you know, couple hundred metres, you don't have to blow them loud, you just blow them quietly like so. So 
uh, as you see, you don't have to blow them out at all. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can blow them. They get a little bit of different note out of them. You can just by cupping your hand around the front, you get something totally different. You go. Now I see it time and time again where two people will come in and purchase a whistle each. Um, first bloke will pull his whistle out of the box and virtually blow it straight away. The second person will go, how in the hell do you do that? Um, it's just a matter of perseverance. My two sons were exactly the same. One virtually blew it straight away. The other one they had to persevere with for a couple of months before he uh, really got a good tune out of it. My son was down recently with my little granddaughter and we took them out whistling for a day and um, my little granddaughter absolutely loved it. She had a great time. Um, my son decided he wanted to whistle. So um, I made him one up and uh, on the way home my little granddaughter got hold of it and annoyed hell out of him the whole trip home. So she uh, picked it up pretty quick. Bobby's ears. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Lois's little granddaughter at the age of three year old first picked up a fox whistle and she's going to show you how easy it is to blow. Uh, she hasn't quite mastered it yet that she could pull a fox in but it won't be long. So well, I'll just throw to that now and you can have a look. Why? never ceases to amaze me how quick children grow up, especially grandchildren. The older we get, the quicker they seem to grow. Now here's a little episode of Maddie and me out whistling recently. He came in nice, Matty, didn't he? Yeah, he's on top. First time Matty's been out, no, second time Matty's been out fox whistling. Yeah. And we just whistled up a fox and got him. Yeah. Well done. Hello, shooters. <laughs> now, Maddox's elder brother, Zach, all of seven years old, decided he'd like to go fox whistling too. He's been having a little bit of a play with whistles around here uh, while I've been making them, but we decided to go out and have a uh, bit of a go. He didn't actually whistle on this particular day, but um, he was, wasn't real sure about the whistling and uh, how, how close the foxes would come, and um, yeah, he was a little bit scared. But anyway, I tried to keep an eye on him, and uh, I was looking backwards and forwards, looking at the, where the fox might come from and looking at him, and all of a sudden a fox came in and at a hell of a rate of knots and I was looking at him instead of looking at where the fox was coming from and when I looked back the fox was almost on top of me all I had a chance to do was bat it away with a barrel and it frightened hell out of Zach and uh, the fox turned tailed and ran and uh, I actually shot it with a shotgun and got it but uh, he was pretty cool then once I'd shot it but uh, yeah it gave him a bit of a fright and he wasn't real keen to go back shooting for about six months so after a period of as I say, about six months, he built up a bit more courage and uh, decided he wanted to go out again. And this time, we let him have a whistle on his own, and uh, he whistled up his first fox, and was just blown away. Gave uh, young Zach a uh, few instructions on how to blow it and when to blow it, and uh, he had a few goes. And in no time at all, the fox had popped his head out of the blackberry bush and jumped up on a log. And uh, Zachy had a couple more whistles, and the fox came trotting down, and uh, I up with a 17 HMR and nail him, and uh, little Zachy just. Made his day. He was stoked. Anyway, we'll cross to that now and we'll show you what, what happened. And again, another one. Another big one.
What's that again? Nice and loud. Nice and loud. Jackie whistled up a fox and we got him. <laughs> <laughs> Zacky just whistled up his first fox. How cool was that, mate? Good. Hey? Yeah. Watch out, he'd make sure he's dead. This is my first fox that I just whistled up. He's a beauty, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. You know, you blew, you blew that whistle that hard. You know what you did? What? You blew your teeth out. <laughs> hey? <laughs> He's a really good fox. He is a good fox, mate, isn't he? Yeah. He's heavy. Really heavy. How exciting was that? Really exciting. Hey? His bum stinks. <laughs> I just whistled up my first fox, and I'm really excited. And as you see on this fox whistle, it says silver fox. It does, mate, doesn't it? Yeah. And how excited are you? Real excited. Hey, that was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah. You reckon we'll get some more? Yep. Righto, we better go and see if we can find another one, eh? Okay. Righto. Now, Zach and I didn't whistle up any more that day. So a week or so later, he was blown away once again. Another one coming, Zachy. How exciting is this? We've got two. Mm. This is a good place. Mm. Hey. Yep. Did you hear the bird squawk for that one too? You whistle him in when I tell you. Oh no, give him a whistle. That'll do. That'll, that'll do, that'll do. Another whistle. Well, just then we shot three foxes. Was that pretty good fun? Yep. Pop said just sit here. Then we whistled up one, got a fox. Whistled up another, got a fox. Whistled up another, and I helped Pop, and then we shot him. And we whistled up all three and got them all. You did a pretty good job. Have you ever whistled up three at once before? Nah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Gets exciting, doesn't it, when they all sort of come in at once? Yeah. Hey? You'll be the fox expert soon. Since making these whistles, there's one thing continually amazes me is the amount of animals and bird life that come when you start whistling. Uh, one thing that does um, continually keep coming up is uh, wallaroos and um, redneck wallabies. Um, they come for kilometres away sometimes and just come right to your feet. Uh, once they arrive, they'll sit there for a bit and then just hop back to where they came from. Uh, recently, um, young Zachy and I were out and uh, we were whistling away and I heard a bit of a rustle behind us and I turned around and there were a, it was a black wallaroo and a female blue flyer sitting about two metres behind us, just sitting there looking at us. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see that happen. Anyway, I'll cross to that footage now and show you. you there. <laughs> you nearly got attacked by kangaroos. Boo! They'll leave them. I thought you were supposed to be checking behind us.
another thing that will come in on a regular basis is feral cats. So if you've got a cat problem, all you need is a silver fox whistle. I'll just uh, flick across to a couple of clips now and you can have a look. You're one dead cat. You might have heard me mention earlier my great uncle who was 96 years of age. Him and my father used to be the greatest of mates. Uh, they hunted and fished together and played cards and drank and enjoyed one another's company for many many years. Sadly my dad passed away in the early 90s. Um, you'll quite often see me using an old double barrel hammer gun uh, in a lot of the video clips. Uh, that was my dad's pride and joy and now it's mine. It's a beautiful old gun, it points beautifully and kills at both ends and very rarely a fox will leave when uh, the hammers fall. So it's a great old piece of equipment. But um, anyway, sadly missed Dad and uh, wish him all the best. But now I'm going to cross to some video clips of my great uncle in action. Beautiful, got him. Well done, Gibby. Dear dog. You did well. Our oh, weapon still works all right? Yeah. Still kick. She still kick all right? Mm -hmm. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs>
Nammy Fox. A picture, eh? Hey, well done. Well, now you would have noticed that the uh, whistle has a funny looking lanyard on it. It's just a little piece of string with a loop in the end of it. If you take that and run your fingers up it and squash it down, you can then feed that through your top buttonhole, like so, pull it through, open the loop back up again, and thread the whistle through the loop. It actually lassoes the top buttonhole, like so, and you can't lose it. Then place it in your top pocket, like so. So while you're out whistling, it's just a matter of taking it, when you want to shoot, drop your whistle. You always know where it is. It's just hanging right at that one spot. Now, a lot of people said to me, why didn't you make a loop and put it over the top of your head? Well, I found that I did that a couple of times and tried it. And every time I climbed through a fence, the top wire would inevitably always catch in the V on the whistle. So I went back to this idea of putting it in your top pocket. Works extremely well. Now, maintenance on those whistles is virtually nil. There's very little to go wrong because it's all stainless steel. Uh, very high tensile, so it's very hard to squash or distort. Uh, holds its uh, shape very good. Uh, if you happen to squash it, obviously you just pull it back out to the measurement that you originally measured to. Uh, the only thing that can happen to it, if you're out in the bush, they can get a little bit of grass in the little V in there, a little bit of grass seed or um, a little bit of bark or something like that. It can be very minute. It doesn't take much to distort the whistle. All you need to do is grab the whistle by the back edge and just slide it up and down your shirt like that and that'll give it a clean inside and occasionally when you come home just chuck it in the sink and uh, put a little bit of detergent in with it and uh, just give it a bit of a wash um, that's all you really need to do um, as far as warranty fully guaranteed lifetime warranty uh, while ever I'm alive I'll replace it if I'm dead I'm not coming back sorry now to replace the whistle back into the box Hold it in your left hand and place the lanyard in your right hand and wind it around your finger two or three times. So just make a little coil like so. And when you do, hold that between your thumb and your forefinger and make that little pile of uh, lanyard at the rear of the whistle, the thinnest part of the whistle. And uh, that stops it. If it's sitting under the front, it tends to squash the whistle down. And all you do then is place the bottom lip back into the case like so and push the back down and it clips back in won't fall out and uh, touch him up and I hope you and your whistle have uh, many happy hunting trips Ark, ark.
Hello, Basil. Meow. 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 Bow. Now in wrapping up I would like to thank my two good friends and hunting partners Pete and Sean and also my two sons Trent and Brock for their assistance in compiling these video clips and now here's a little tribute to each of them. Thanks boys. Hello, Basil. Excellent call, big fella. <laughs> he came from, what, about seven or 800 metres? Yeah. There's a good, good call. I think I got footage of him pretty well all the way in. Should look good. Yeah, he's a long way out. Well done. Yeah, just um, had a phone call last night in relation to the foxes in this particular area. Ron and I shoot this paddock every year and uh, we generally take big numbers off this block but um, generally no sheep in this area. But uh, the farmer that owns the place rang me yesterday and he's got uh, 40 odd ewes and they're having early lambs this year and uh, as of uh, the night before last he had 15 lambs. Yesterday morning he had four. So there's a lot of foxes here, but uh, I tell you what, little 17 straight between the eyes, soon sorts them out. One less lamb eater. Yeah. Well done. Very good. That's the second one for the morning. Yeah. Money just started. Come on, straight at you. Done well, mate. Yeah. That's two to start with. You've done real well. Second whistle, second whistle, and we picked up a couple. Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Well done.
Well done, Trono. Didn't know he was any further. Nah, he smelled us, the wind spun around. What's daddy got? Now, if you ever want to contact us for any particular reason, just take your uh, fox whistle box, rotate it over, and on the rear is all our details on how we can be contacted. We have a web page, Facebook page, and email, and also the mobile phone numbers on there. So uh, don't hesitate to call if you have any problems or you've got any good stories or uh, anything you'd like to let us know about. Uh, please don't hesitate to call, and uh, good hunting. Thank you.